Hello, my name is Patrick Corbett from Heriot Watt University, and today I'm going to talk to you about geological well testing in fractured reservoirs. This is based on a paper uh, that was given at the AG in Madrid uh, with co authors from Delft University. So, why fractures are important? Fractures can develop the low permeability of the matrix, they increase well production, and they charge the reservoir in the first place. But Poor matrix cover due to poor porosity communication between the fracture and the matrix. There's the possibility of early water breakthrough. Intensity and dipper fractures play a critical role. And it's difficult to estimate the recovery factor. Fracture data. Where do we get fracture data from? It's difficult to detect from seismic. Fractures are often predictable, but not exactly where fractures occur. Well, data are often limited because you have limited fracture inter inter intersections poor core recovery, and difficult to quantify fracture porosity, permeability. You cannot ignore the fractures, they have a major impact on the fluid flow and the recovery prediction. The alternative is to use analog data. And here we use our colleagues' data from Delft University, they've been working in Tunisia, where there are excellent fractured carbonate outcrops. And there's an intensive amount of data collected from these. Now, uh, here are some images of fractured outcrops and the team from Delft and their drone. And the drone is used to get up close and to capture uh, correct aerial, in this case, uh, side-on photographs of these large outcrops. This is the outcrop. You see the natural fracture network there up on the dipping outcrop. We can see uh, natural fractures. Uh, these are the pre-folded burial fractures. We have some synfolding stress fractures, and then post-folding we have exhumation and the fractures are developed. So there's a number of different phases there of fractures detected, and these have all been mapped by Kevin uh, at Delft. Types of fractures in fractured reservoirs. So here is Ron Nelson's uh, fracture type, and we're going to concentrate on class two fractures. These are fractures where the fracture systems where you have the essential permeability in the fractures, but you have the storage in the matrix. And these are some of the more challenging ones to uh, characterize. The use of geological well testing, we've been working on this for 25 years or more, and we're now at the stage where we can obtain uh, well test responses from models of fractured reservoirs. And the way we do this is to build the geological model of known geology, in this case, the outcrop, and generate synthetic well test response. Integration of geology and well testing helps understand how these fractured reservoirs might work. So the well test models, fractured reservoirs, uh, Warren and Root developed this in the 90s. Uh, there's two parameters up there, Omega, which is essentially the storage of the fracture system relative to the matrix. And on the other side there, the Omega, which is the ratio of the permeabilities of the matrix to the fracture. And you've got the drawdown equation at the bottom. And all you have to note from that is that as the fracture storage increases, the uh, differential pressure decreases, and as the fracture permeability increases, the differential pressure also decreases. Now, normally you would look at this on a, a, a time pressure plot, and you could see the radial flow initially there at one, uh, followed by a transitional stage, and then the late time radial flow as the matrix and the fractures work together. The solution of this, uh, is, is uh, outlined there in items one to five, but uh, usually people look at the derivative curves and use a type curve method, and those type curves below would show the pressure buildup at the top and the derivative below. And what you're looking for in a double porosity system is the V shape, and the depth of the V is proportional to the fracture matrix storage, and the where the V occurs in the derivative is related to the uh, fracture permeability ratio, the lambda. So here's our fracture network now from the Tunisian outcrop. There are two sets of fractures, uh, one uh, approximate north-south and the other approximately east-west, the later stage. So fracture properties, well in this particular case, to keep it simple, we're going to have a pretty uniform uh, opening, which means that we have a uniform uh, porosity and permeability in the fracture network. So the fracture, to get our fracture properties, we take a fracture of one millimeter and we put this in a grid block 
and that ends up with a fracture for a meter grid block of 8.83 Darcy's, so high permeability. So that's for a one millimeter fracture in one meter cube of rock. So here's our geological model. To begin with, we have a uniform properties, the limestone. It looks a little bit gray. Uh, it's because of the, all the fine cells. There are about 70,000 cells in this block. And uh, we're going to model a single facies limestone, a single matrix porosity, and a single matrix permeability. Those we take from an outcrop, and you can see the distributions there. The average porosity of the matrix is around 17% porosity, and the average permeability of the matrix is around 8.7 millidarsis. So the fracture is taken in as a set of discrete fracture elements into the model. And then we look at uh, calculating uh, the properties of the cells and uh, populating the model. We have the reservoir enge engineering parameters where we just use a single phase fluid. And we go through the simulations. To begin with, we check that there is a homogeneous grid. And we do that by making sure that in the center of this plot, we show that the derivatives has a nice radial flow. We interpret that and we get 8.75 millidarsis, which is close to our input. This is a case with no fractures. Then we put our fractures in, and here we see a very different derivative response. We see the half slope uh, to the left-hand side there. That is a, a finite conductivity fracture. And then we have the distinctive V-shape in the middle of the plot, and that's what we're looking at. If you were to interpret that, you would get a well test permeability of 660 millidarsis, which doesn't relate either to the fractures or to the matrix, but to some combination of those. So to do the simulations, it's very important. We need to set the matrix system, sorry, the fracture system there within a jacket, which is the matrix. And so that's important to keep the uh, pressure boundary from hitting the edge of your simulation cell too quickly. And you see there that it makes a difference in the very late time as you go uh, to the right of the axis there, you can see the slight differences. So rather than hitting a boundary, you're actually hitting what you might think might be the matrix uh, away from the fracture system outside of these area of your simulation. So with our different models that we can set up a set of different models then with different apertures and we can have ascribe different properties. And we can do this and generate a set of type curves uh, where you can see the uh, depth uh, is related to the uh, storage of the uh, fracture and matrix, and the time is related to the permeability of the fracture and the matrix. And you can see how with systematic changes, if you refer back to the previous slide, you'll see how with those systematic changes, you get a systematic set of derivative curves. The overall uh, position of the derivative is lower when the overall system permeability is higher, and it raises when the overall permeability is lower. The various elements you can recognize, you can recognize uh, the infinite conductive fracture there in the earlier time, the uh, double porosity system, and then a radial flow and the constant pressure boundary at the late stage. Now, what this is showing is that the infinite conductivity fracture, if you hit the fracture in the well, and then you're transfer to a double porosity system where the matrix and fracture are interacting. So this would be a typical of a type two fracture system with a very high permeability fracture. If you notice that when you interpret the well test permeability, the well test permeability tends to be higher uh, than the uh, average permeability of the system when the contrast is not very high between the fractures and it tends to be lower than the overall system as the fracture contrast gets higher. So here you, on this slide, you see the effects of the resolution of, of the model as you change the size of the grid from the very small up to uh, from half a meter by half a meter by half a meter to up to five by five by five. And you lose resolution of the derivative as a result of that. So you can see here that the uh, coarse grain is the red case and it drops down to the green case uh, with uh, the high resolution grid. So you start to see uh, with low resolution grid that you start to get a secondary uh, divot in there, which is not really part of the a system that you're trying to explore, but is an effect of having these larger grids with the fractures in them. And uh, you can see on the left, uh, a, a clearer representation of that where the coarse grain model has the, uh, in, in the middle of the derivative there, has that second dip, 
whereas the fine resolution model showing clearly the flow in the fracture has a very sharp uh, double porosity signature in the V of the derivative. As we change the location of the well, because this is important, so we have the same fracture system here and the same matrix properties, we just change the location of the well. And we see that this produces quite a different response. The uh, derivative to the lower part of this diagram is the case when the well actually hits the fracture and you see the finite conductivity fracture early and then you see the nice uh, transfer V distinctively there at a much lower level because the overall permeability is higher system is a higher system, higher permeability system. And then you see at the late time there, those two other derivatives, which are where you drill the well first in the matrix, and then you see the fracture system. But obviously the fracture system is much reduced. And this just shows those two uh, drilled into the matrix to begin with. And you see that uh, you get a sharper V uh, and an earlier time uh, when you have the um, uh, well closer to the fracture system. But again, the properties you get of the fracture system do not represent the properties that you would get either of the fracture or of the matrix. So you have to decovolve those. So in conclusion, grid size resolution is really important. Uh, inaccurate modeling of the fractures, uh, you need to, to have a, a fracture limitation, the software limitation. So you have to be careful that you have enough resolution. And this has been one of the difficult issues in fracture modeling, using ge geological models for fracture well test modeling. Not all fractures have the same conductivity and contribution within the system, even if they are modeled that way. The location of the well relative to the fractures is very important. You can see this double porosity and also the finite conductivity fracture if you inter it, it drill a well into the fracture itself. And it's possible to generate a family of type curves in fractured reservoirs, uh, which is this technique of geological well testing. I have to acknowledge the sponsors. Uh, the Delft work was sponsored by Total. I have been sponsored by BG Group over the last few years. Slumberger provided software. And just to refer you again to the paper that was presented uh, in the AG, if you find the abstract, you can find out more information on that paper. Thank you very much.